Savior. Amen, our Redeemer. The love of our soul. Praise and worship this morning. Praise and worship actually tills the soil of our heart to prepare us for the word of God this morning. And we greet you. Amen. I'm Pastor Anderson Walker, senior pastor of the New Harvest Church of God. We greet you live. We welcome you uh, into our worship services all over again. And we pray God's blessing. God has sent a way for us to be blessed by. If you're ready for the word, I'm ready. God is awesome. God is magnificent. And we bless his name. Amen. So we thank you for joining in and, and invite others to join in as well as we get into the word tonight. Amen. This morning, shall I say. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. Coming to you, dear God, in praise and in worship. Thank you, God. You bless us in the midst of these times to be here in this parking lot service of God, touching your brain, seeking you to hear your heart, dear God, and to, to know you in a more deep and intimate way, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for sending a word. You declared that your word is a truth of spread. It brings healing to us, oh God. It brings deliverance. It brings confidence, dear God. And it brings hope to Father, and we thank you for it. We thank you, God, that every heart is ready, dear God, and every mind is alert to receive that which you have for us today as we give you a long glory and praise in Jesus name we pray amen and amen we want to thank you once again for just your love and your faithfulness and all those that that, that, that are giving something and celebrating clergy month it is our joy to say thank you thank it is our joy to pray our joy to serve that we want to say thank you and as we come before you this morning there is a word from the Lord. I want to talk about today is its continuation. I want to continue to talk about today confidence, confidence in the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. Confidence in the finished work of Christ will strengthen my active faith. Confidence in the finished work of Christ will strengthen my active faith. We talk about having an active faith, a faith that is alive, a faith that is being vibrant. A faith that is that is that is producing something, not a dormant faith. We're not talking about something that does not produce. I mentioned to you that I heard a minister say one time, if your faith lacks fruits, it means it's faith. <laughs> so our faith is to be producing something all of the time. There are two foundational texts that I wanted to skim from this morning. And the first one is first John chapter five. Amen. First John chapter five, beginning with verse four. Begin with verse 4, and then I'm going to read, go further and read 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and we will get started. Amen. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says that, listen, I'm going to read from Amplified Version, it says this, For whoever is born of God is victorious over the world. Amen. And this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Yeah. Look at it again. This is, this is it. Whosoever is born of God overcomes, is an overcomer. I want you to understand that you Hallelujah. are an overcomer this morning. Hallelujah. You may feel yes, defeated. You may think you're defeated. Yes. Circumstances may be heavy upon yes, you. Lord. You may think that there's no way out. But God has declared through the finished work of Christ that you are an overcomer. Yes. Now look at verse 14. It says this. Because if I am an overcomer, it's going to do something to me. Verse 14 says this in, in that same passage. And I'll read it from the Amplified Version as well. It says, and this is the confidence, the assurance. The privilege of boldness yes. which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, if, I mean, according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens and heareth us. Praise now, God. the King James says that this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, we have the petition that we desire of him. Now, understand something. That is a finished work. God is available and always is available to hear your prayers, to hear your requests, to hear your hurts, to comfort your disappointment, Hallelujah. and bring peace in time of adversity. Hallelujah. 
that is a finished work. So then, how am I to have confidence in this finished work? Listen here. To enjoy the victory, to enjoy victory, it does not come automatically. Yeah. Even though we have been assured through the sacrifice of Christ, it is the knowledge of the redemptive work of Christ. If my knowledge of the redemptive work of Christ is small, therefore the, my potential of victory is small. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get that? Now, if the, the greater my revelation of the redemptive work of Christ, the greater manifestation of victory. If my man, if my if my glory, revelation glory. is small, my victory is small. Yeah. Now I want yeah. us to understand this, you know. Because we've been given a position of victory does not mean we walk in victory. My Lord, my Lord. We understand that. Yeah. Because he has already places in a position of victory, but how do I manifest that victory is the key. Hallelujah. That's the key. You can have victory, okay, yeah. but don't know how to achieve it. So let's go do a few things this morning. I want to deal first of all with this, the power of the redemption. Power of redemption. I must understand that, that I have been purchased back by God through the sacrifice of Christ. I must understand that when he paid my debt, he restored all the benefits. Glory, 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 glory. When he paid my debt, he restored all the benefits. He did not redeem me and left things unpaid, uncovered, or undone. He didn't half pay for my debt. He totally paid for my debt. So when Christ redeemed us, when God redeemed us in the sacrifice of Jesus, and Jesus spilling his blood, you were purchased. We were purchased. When God paid the debt for us in Christ, it brought the benefit package with him. Come on. Amen. The benefit package is the remedy to sickness, disease, poverty, and fear. Sickness, disease, poverty, and fear has been covered. It is a finished work. I must have confidence in that. So there's a separate passage of scripture that we want to read to you. Dealing with the power of the redemption. Power of redemption. Let's go first to, to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Amen. And we're going to look at verses 12 through verses 14, which says this right here. It says, neither by the blood of goats, calves, but Christ by his own blood entered into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. I want you to get this down. He did not pay for your sins through the blood of bulls or goats or an animal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took his own blood, own blood inside the holy of holiness, sprinkling on the mercy seat of heaven yes, he to did. cover our debt. Now understand what it says here now. Our, our redemption is eternal. Hallelujah. When you receive Christ as your personal Savior, his redemption is eternal. You would get that. Glory. He's not going to pay another price. He's not going to pay another debt. He's yeah. not going to hang on the cross again. It's already covered. It's already paid. Praise God. This Praise is what it says God. here now, verse 13. It said here, here is a strong comparison or analogy to help us really understand the power of redemption. Verse 13 says this. For if the blood of bulls and goats in the ashes of a heifer sprinkle the unclean, sprinkle the unclean, sanctify and purify the flesh. What is he saying here? Under the old covenant, if the old covenant they could sacrifice a bull or a goat or a sprig of ashes on you and it would purify your flesh, this is verse 14, how much more, how much more would the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot unto God purge, purge, My cleanse, God. purge, Cleanse, purge of oh. our consciousness from dead works to serve the living God. My God. So the blood of Jesus placed you in a position yeah. that you can serve God wholeheartedly oh. with that is an agreement in heaven and earth to allow heaven blessings to manifest in the earth. Oh. The blood of hey. Jesus purged our hey. sin consciousness and paid the debt for your sin. Glory. Sin has more power over you glory. because of the blood. Glory. And when God sees you, he sees you through the blood of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You're not an old sinner saved by grace. Yes. You are a new creature yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. Glory, glory, you are a new glory, creature. Glory. So the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, listen, redeem us from the power and the authority of darkness. Yes. 
It set us totally free from sin, sickness, disease, poverty, and fear. Yeah. There must be confidence in Christ's blood that he purchased our deliverance completely. Yes, yes, yes. You must believe in the blood. Yes, you Lord, must I believe, believe the blood. Woo. You quote the blood. The you blood talk about the blood. Yeah. When the oh, devil wants to come against Jesus. you, just say, I, plead the the I plead the blood of Jesus. 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 The blood of Jesus stands against you, yeah. sir. Yeah. 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 Now let's go, let's get in Hebrews again. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Dealing with the power of redemption. Hebrews chapter 8. Let's look at verse 12. It says this right here. This is what God said. For I will be merciful to their transgressions. And their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. I will do what? Remember no more. People may bring it up, but God won't. Yes. Yeah. God won't bring up your past. No, he God not going to condemn you about your past. Why? Come he's on. already paid for your past yes, and your did. future. Yes, he did. Then he's not giving us a spirit of condemnation. Yes, Lord. He does not condemn us. God loves Hallelujah. us. When you make a mistake, don't run from God. Run, run to him. God. Hallelujah. Run to God. When a little child is when a, when a child is a little baby and they get hurt, they don't run from the parent. They run to the parent. Yes. Yeah. Why should we run from God? We should be running to God. Why? The power of redemption. So therefore, God is merciful and will remember your unrighteous deeds no more. It doesn't matter. Listen, listen. If God doesn't remember, why should you be bound by it? My God, my God. You should be constantly speaking of your future and not your past. But remember this. Just truly repent and turn away from it. Amen. Did you get that? Yes, Just truly repent, yes, turn away from it. Yes, because Lord. if God don't remember it, then you tell the devil that was the old man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not the new man. Yes. I have a new identity. I've yes. been born of God and I'm an overcomer of the world. Yes, he has given me the victory to overcome the world. I use my faith. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here's another ship. We stand in Hebrews for a moment. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's look at verses 16 and verses 17, which says this here. It says, this is the covenant that I will make. God said, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. One word stands for this means to imprint. To wow, imprint. Wow. You know, if anyone worked in a printing press or something like that, they made a master plate. Yeah. The master plate was what they made all the copies out of. Mm. Did you get that? Yeah. So the master plate stayed intact because the master yeah. plate was used to print all yeah. the other copies. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to notice here what here. See, 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 when Satan tempted Adam and Adam sinned. Adam was just a copy, but he wasn't the end with the Woo! master plate. Woo! Hallelujah. He Hallelujah. was just a copy. Yeah. See, see, and, 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 and that curse stayed on the copy until the master plate Come went on. alert Come through on. 42 generations. Yeah. So when the master plate yeah. the master picked the earth, then it conquered set, uh, Satan and disease. Yeah. It conquered sin. Yeah. Why? He could not deal with the master. Yeah. Yeah. So God is saying, this is the covenant I'm going to write with you. I'm going to put my put my consciousness, I'm going to put my spirit, I'm going to put my word inside you. Jesus. Woo. My he God. goes on to say this right here in verse 17. Again, and their sins and iniquities, I will I remember no more. I remember no more. Why? He used us through the blood of Jesus. He said, I will remember it no more. You're no longer in the same old person you used to be. You can be a new creation in Christ Jesus today. The power of redemption. This is the covenant, the new agreement. The Holy Spirit will imprint his words, the principles of God, in our spirits, in our minds. Why? It transformed our behavior to kingdom culture. To walk in confidence with an active faith in the finished work of Christ. 
He's already paid for your success. Yes, He's already paid for your failures. Yes. He's already paid for your condemnation. You, he already paid for your disturbance. He already yes. has defeated the enemy on your behalf. You are, we are a blessed people. Yes. Now, if you don't believe it, well, let's go to Colossians, the book of Colossians. Amen. 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 The book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 2. Amen. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 2, and let's look at verses 14 and verses 15. Verses 14 begin to say, blotting out, this is what Christ did, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. He took it out of the way. Listen, he nailed it to the cross, and that's, that's number one. He took your sins and your failures, your shortcomings and your hang-ups. Your disturbance and those things that are nagging to you, all your infirmities, he nailed it to the cross. 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 Every sickness, disease, poverty, and fear, disturbance, he nailed it to the cross. Every defeat that the enemy want to bring to you, he nailed it to the cross. Every attack that the enemy want to bring to you, he nailed it to the cross. He nailed our shortcomings to the cross, and we received the victory in Christ Jesus. Come on. So it says he nailed it. He took it out of the way. And here's the key. The key, the devil from bringing stuff back up to you again. Look at verse 15. He spoiled principality. Come on. And power. And Woo! made us show them openly. This is triumphing over, over them, them in it. Yeah. This is powerful. Christ's blood blotted out. The word blot means to erase entirely. Come on. You can't yes. go back and find your yes. sins. You can't go back and find your fault. Yes. He erased it entirely. He wiped it out of the way. Yes. He, 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 listen, listen, listen. He obliterated it. Yes. He My leave God. no trace or trail for the enemy to follow because you've been totally delivered. Yes. When the enemy follow you, he should see the blood of Jesus. Yes. Jesus. To spoil means to break authority. It means to take away his goods and his weapons to cause no further harm. My God. You have been delivered. Yes. The power of redemption. Yes. Let's go to, this is powerful here now. Because once he spoiled your principality and power. So then the only weapon Satan has to use on you is your ignorance. My God. My Lord. Ignorance is everybody's mountain. Jesus. Because when you know who you are, you're going to walk in victory. Yes, yes. When yes. you don't know who you are, you walk in defeat. It's not the lack of God's love. It's the lack of our knowledge of his love. Yes. Are we getting this here? Once you get a revelation of God's love, listen to me. Worshiping God is easy because it's birthed out of love. Yes, it is. It's birthed out of love. Yes, it is. Why are we here? We love God. I love him. I love him. Why do we him. pray? We love God. Why do we intercede? Him. We love God. I love him. Why do we give? We love God. Hallelujah. Why I do we live him. the best and possible life? We hold it like we can live. We want to live. We love God. Amen. Everything is birthed out of that love. But he 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 he, he spoiled principality and power. Yes. Satan does not have power over you. Glory. Now, let's go to Ephesians. Amen. We're going to walk through this right here. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at verses 13, verse 15, which says this right here. Now, but now in Christ, we who are sometimes were far off, did know God, made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. Having both, having made both one, yes. he broken down the middle wall of a tissue that was between us. Here's his word. He abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for making in himself of twain one new man. One new man. One new man. One new man that we can walk in agreement with God. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. A new species of being. This is who we are. This is how we affect our territory. This is how God places you, place you in a particular spot to make sure kingdom culture is developed. 
Now, in all of that, in all of that, to abolish means to render idle. It means to make of no effect. Everything that was against us has been done away with. But what is our part? What is our part? Go to the book of Isaiah. Amen. A familiar, maybe somewhat familiar, Isaiah 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Verses 3 and verses 4. Notice what Isaiah says. That thou would keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted thee. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. What is the beginning of my portion in this? Where is my attention span? Where is my focus? One word for mind here is imagination. What occupy your thinking capacity? Perfect peace is available to every believer whose mind, whose imagination, whose thought, whose pondering, whose medita meditation is upon God's love for you. Because whatever you are thinking of will control your decision making and the choices my, you make. My, my, my. Whatever you spend time pondering become the basis of your, of your decision. My God. If you're not meditating on God's word, <clears throat> that means something else is occupying your thinking. Which means that whatever is a greater truth to you that you call truth is what your decision is based upon. So that we quote it sometime in trouble by saying, you know, you know, you know, you know that, that who am I standing on, on the Lord is one of perfect peace. That is correct. But the meditation and the pondering and the imagination is done on purpose. It's not done by accident. Renewing your mind is not what God do for you. Come on. It's what, what you, you do for you because you love God. That's right. Your mind is not automatically renewed. My Lord. No, no, it is not. It is not. That's why Romans says that, that be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, one of the reasons that, that, that God that God had to give commandments and God to give ordinances when it came out of Egypt, think for a minute. They were 400 years with the mind of an Egyptian. Yeah. That's right. And now you bring them out. So God got to give them something to renew their minds to think his thoughts. Come on. 400 years in and being an Egyptian, who are you going to think like? The Egyptian, yeah. What's all your decisions going to be based upon? So God had to give them a word Come to on. help them to think the way he thinks. To get them to mold again, this is how God operates. So he put things in motion again, and he gave them command by saying, what you saw back there, that's not me. Come on, come on. Have no other God before me. Okay. You have plenty back there, that's not me. Amen. Hallelujah. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind. Because that back there, that, what, that didn't represent me. The world will give you a bunch of things to think about. But if it does not agree with the word, cast it out. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're, 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 we're not conformed to the world ways. We're not put into the world's box. The world not going to trap your potential and kill your creativity. Hallelujah. A mind that is pondering, a mind that is on him. The Amplified Bible says this. Say so God will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind is both his in, both his inclination and his character, because your thinking will express itself in your behavior. Come on, come on. If you think down, you're gonna be down. You're gonna be down, and you're gonna do what down people do. My Lord. That's where it starts. If you entertain it. You're subject to become it. My God. As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. So is he. What's our part? Begin to renew your mind. Begin to renew your mind. Begin to renew your mind. 
That is our part. That is something that we have to do. We must do if we're going to walk in total victory. And here's the key. God wants us to get a revelation of his love for us. I did not say your love for God. I said a revelation of his love for you. Once I understand how much God loves me, I'm going to love him more. I can't love him to the depths until I understand how much he loved me. Because, because listen, to this, because in Romans it says that, so that he has placed his love inside of us. So you talking about a love, want to meet love to express love. But if I don't have a revelation of the love, it'll never meet love and I can't express love. So I must let the revelation of love connect with the love so that I can express the love of God to those that is around me. That's why you can handle things and people wonder, how can you handle it? That's why you, 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 you act instead of react. That's why that they don't get under your skin like they, like they used to. That's why they don't bother you like they used to. Why? God's love is increasing on the inside of you. The revelation is God's love for me. Be not conformed to this world, be you transformed. Wait, first he says, he says, he says listen, listen. He says, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, number one, that you, that you, that you what? Dedicate your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and separate unto God. Amen. Under God. He says, see, you have to dedicate it. You have to dedicate it as a living sacrifice. One writer says, the only thing about a living sacrifice is want to get off the altar. There are certain stuff we need to we need to let die and kill in our lives. My God, yeah. Amen. Yeah. He said we have to offer it yeah. as a living sacrifice. Holy, 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 holy unto God. Glory. Which is our reasonable or the least we could do yeah. in expressing our love for God. So then our bodies is a manifestation of the truth that we decide to obey. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever information you call truth, your body going to express it. I don't care what it is, your body going to express it. So therefore, we need a revelation. Be not conformed to live by someone else's standard other than God's. Don't adopt the world ways of, of patterning yourself after it. Listen at this. My mind is the source of information I call truth. Joshua says, meditate on it day and night. That's our part. Mm. You get that? Hallelujah. That's yes. what? Our, our part. part. And understanding and walking in the power of redemption. Lastly, I must know this. Lastly, I must know this. Which simply means if I don't know this, that means I don't know how to handle situations. Right. All right. The book of John, chapter 16. Praise God. The book of John, chapter 16. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 33. Verse 33. These things, Jesus said, I have spoken unto you that ye may have peace. These things have I spoken unto you that ye may have peace. Here it is. In the world, you shall have tribulations. Now, don't stop there. I don't want your amen there. I want your amen on the other part that I'm about to read. Yeah, yeah. But be of good cheer. Yeah, hallelujah. hallelujah. I have overcome, overcome the world. <laughs> See, most of the time we shout on the tribulations yeah. as if we giving God glory by going through. Well, well, listen to this. No. But be of good cheer. Yeah. Be of good yeah. cheer. Be of good cheer. Why? Yeah. He has already overcome the world and gave us the victory. Glory to God. We can have peace because we know we face stuff in the world. Yeah. But you don't let what happened in the world get you down. Yeah. Yeah. You don't let it drown your joy. You don't let it steal your hope. You don't let it rob your potential. You don't let it steal your dreams. As long as we live, there are challenges we're going to face in this world. But so be it. We've already winners. We are already winners. We are already winners. Now let's go back to John chapter 14 and look at verse 27. Amen. Jesus talking again. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace. 
give I unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Did you get that? Why? We have his peace. As we go through the issues in life, we go through it with the peace of God. The peace of God is the strength of God. It's that is that is that quiet assurance of confidence that we have in God that we know all is well. Well, let's go to another. Go to the book of Philippians. Amen. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 4. And let's look at this right here for a second. This is powerful here. Why? Because we want to have confidence in the finished work of Christ. It strengthens my what? Active faith. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 6 to verse 8 here. Well, again, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known that the Lord is at hand. Be careful on anxiety or worry about nothing. But in every situation, in everything, by prayer and supplication, equipped with thanksgiving, Make your request be made, be made known to God. If they say you crying and you begging. Oh Lord, please help me. No, no, no. The, 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 listen, listen. Hebrews said we come boldly before the throne of grace. Holy, holy. That we can find a very present help in the time of trouble. Yes, yes. God don't want you coming to him begging like, like I'm your poor, weak, and unworthy servant, need being and body bound. No. Hallelujah. You're a child of God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. He already knows everything anyway. Yeah. Just come open Bold before him. Yeah. Then he says, be careful and anxiety about nothing. Let your request be made known to God. See, when you do that, the next verse tells what we get. Verse 7, and the peace, peace of, God, of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. It will keep your heart assured and your mind at ease until manifestation comes. And then he gives you things to think about in verse 8. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, that's what you think about. Whatsoever things are honest, think about. What's some things are just? Think about. What's some things are pure? Think about. What's some things are lovely? Think about. What things have a good report? Think about. If there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. Notice here, he's telling you to think on these on purpose in the midst of what you're dealing with. He's saying, shift your thoughts. You know what's true. Don't think about a lie. Thank you. You know what's honest? Don't think about deception. Amen, amen. You know, you, you know what is pure. Don't think about what's ungodly or fleshly. You know what is lovely. Don't think about that that goes against it. You know what is a good report. Don't receive the bad report. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, you know what has virtue? He said, think on these things here. Releasing every situation to Christ and receiving the peace that is made available to you by thinking on the things of God. Now the last thing. He says, I must know. I must know. I must know. I must know. Let's go to the book of James. Amen. Amen. The book of James. Because he says that these things I must know if I'm going to experience. Amen. Confidence in the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. Strengthen my active faith. Know what James chapter 1 says. <laughs> Amen. Amen. James chapter 1 again in verse 1. Well, let's get in verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in divers trials or tests or temptation. Amplified by says, consider the holy joy for my brother whenever you are enveloped and encounter trials of any sort or various temptation. He said, count it joy. He didn't say it was joy. Count it joy. The reason I can count it joy because of the finished work of Christ. I can count it joy because I'm more than a conqueror. I can count it joy because I have the peace of God. I can count it joy because I'm more than a conqueror. I can count it joy because he gave me things to think about. 
I can count it, Judge, because he meets all my needs. I can count it, Judge, he's a very present help in the midst of trouble. I can count it, Judge, because I'm saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh endurance or yeah. patience. Listen, patience not only means endurance, here it is. Patience also means to remain the same in the midst of the battle. Come on. Hallelujah. Don't lose who you are in the battle. Win or lose, you're born again. Amen. Amen. But we're winners. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I, I, I love what I heard Kenny Hagin say one time. He said, listen, victory is assured. It's just the fact of how long you're willing to stand for it. Come on. Come on. My Lord. It's already yours. Because the first set of standing is convincing yourself. The second state of standing is, is acknowledge that God's word is truth. The third state of standing is, Lord, I'm going to praise you. The fourth state of standing is, Lord, the manifestation is already here. So how long are we willing to stand for it? Lastly, let's go back to this text right here. I must know this. I must know this. And if I know this, and if I know this, if I know this, I can go back to 1 John. Chapter 5, verse 14. Note what it says here. This is the confidence, yeah. the assurance, yeah. the privilege of boldness which we have in Him. We are sure that if we ask anything or make any request according to His will, in agreement with His plan, He listen and hear with us. And since we are positively know that he listened to us, whatever we ask, we also know we settle in absolute knowledge. Here it is it, that we have granted, we have granted us the present repossession request we made of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a confidence yes. in the finished work of Christ yes. that strengthens my active faith. Yes, Lord. So it doesn't matter what you're dealing with right now. God has a word for it. He has a word for it. Doesn't matter how difficult you may think the things are right now. Or how, how, how deep you may think you're in. There is a way out. In the midst of this pandemic, God is still a healer. Yes, he He's is. still meeting needs. He's still opening yes, up doors. He's still yes, blessing. Yes. Listen, because, because something is happening in the world, there's nothing happening in heaven. He's still, he's still bringing blessings from heaven into the earth when we receive them. When we receive them. So I speak the blessing over you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to give you glory and praise. We come to magnify your name. We come to worship your name. We thank you for your word today, O oh God. We thank you, God, that we've been strengthened with might and inward being. Thank you for anointing every ear to hear. You're comforting every heart. You're uplifting, dear God. You're filling every void. You're strengthening through every test right now. We thank you that you're there with us, oh God. We have confidence in you. We have confidence in the finished work of Christ. We have confidence we are in, the, in, the, in the blood and the power of redemption that we belong to you. So we face with difficulties. You said we have good cheer. Yeah. We are overcomers. Yeah. We receive that victory right now. To walk in it right now. In the name of Jesus. Every heart says amen. 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 We want to thank you on Facebook Live and for joining us. We pray God's blessings upon you. We love you. We thank every member and everyone that is here in the parking lot Woo! service. We give God glory and praise for every last one of you. Yeah. And we just want to say that we love you. We appreciate your love, your faithfulness, your continuous support, your presence, and everything you do. Because everything you do for God will last and will stand, and you will be blessed and rewarded for it. Amen. We want to say to you in our closing, tune in again. Amen. Wednesday night, 630, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. God loves you. And remember, Jesus is Lord. God bless you.